So recently, Kamala Harris held a rally in what's this, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and some quote unquote hecklers, you know, started yelling, and she made a comment that kind of rubbed a lot of us the wrong way. But before I get into that video, let me kind of give you a little backdrop on your sister girl Kamala Harris. Now, she is supposed to be a Baptist. Uh, there's an article that I read to where her pastor name is Amos C. Brown, and he was one of the students of the late Martin Luther King Jr., civil rights leader. And he's the pastor of Third Baptist Church in San Francisco, which is interesting because we all know the history of San Francisco and the LMNOP community. What's also funny is a few days ago, I was talking to somebody and asked him, hey, you ever heard of a second Baptist church or second AME? Because you always see a first, but I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen a second. Damn sure didn't see a third. And it's just funny, like ironically, like right on cue, I see this article and it shows that she's part of the third Baptist church. So that's two things that's just kind of, you know, that just sets her apart from everyone. But it says she called a pastor, you know, a couple months back and asked him to pray for her, her husband in the country because she's about to run for president because Joe Biden had dropped up, dropped up the race. But real quick, this is why a lot of brothers have left the church. Not that they have left the biblical teachings of the scriptures, but it's just that when you see a fraud, you see somebody, a man who doesn't stand on what they talk about, you can't rock with them no matter what it is, you know, in your heart and your soul, you're like, ah, something ain't right about this. I got to go. doesn't mean I can't read scriptures. doesn't mean I can't study. doesn't mean I can't, you know, go out and, you know, and learn, you know, go to school, whatever the case may be. doesn't mean it can't do any of that. It's just that when a man is flawed in his service, you just can't follow a guy like that. When you know you have a vice president that's running on, Elemental P issues on reproductive right issues, and we know what that means. And you still follow, and you still want to support her and endorse that person. You, my friend, I got to look down upon as a as a pastor because you're not standing on the scriptures. I don't care how you try to word it and throw in grace and all that kind of stuff. You still got to live by the law. That's just scriptural. That's biblical. You have to, I don't care. Hey, if you studied it right, you know exactly what it said. But this is not a this is not a sermon. This is not a theological class. I'm just here to report on the news, right? So, like I said, she was part of the Third Baptist Church. And what's funny too, what's really funny is she speaks about her mother and how her mother raised her and her sister. And she learned her values from her mother, not really saying too much positive about her father, except that he's Jamaican. So, you know, she comes from a Jamaican family. So, you know how she feel about, you know, the greenery trying to be funny, but got, got nothing else to say about her father. Religiously, her mother is Hindu and her father was a black Baptist. And this was said by Reverend Amos C. Brown. So it's just interesting that she chose to follow her father's religion and not her mother's religion, but yeah, her mother is the one who pretty much supposedly raised her and her sister. But besides that, you know, she's going to, to a church, I guess, by the time y'all see this, it'll be today or, well, well, uh, you know, the 20th, October 20th. She's going to a church in Georgia, you know, just to stomp the campaign in these closely swung states, which is interesting. I really don't like, you know, church. But, you know, really, I didn't like, you know, church. We don't like, like church and, and, and politics being, being mixed because when it comes to politics, a person should not sway you into voting a certain way. The only thing that should sway you into voting a certain way are the policies. And that's it. Oh, yeah. By the way, Monday, I'm going to go early vote. 
It shouldn't be your pastor just because your pastor said, just because your dad, your mom, or whoever said, your friend, your homeboy, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife. Just because they're going that way doesn't necessarily mean you should go that way unless they come with policies. They tell you about policies that you may or may not know that you agree with. And they say, hey, if you agree with these policies, then you should, with these biblically based policies, then you should vote that way. Now, am I telling you to vote for Donald Trump? No, I'm not. I'm telling you to vote for whoever you want to, somebody who you want to, not who somebody else wants you to. All I'm just bringing you is some information to try to help you, you know, along the lines of just, just to give you information. So to kind of, you know, just so you, so you can learn and you can make an educated decision. So like I say, she's going to a church this weekend, but then I want to go to brnow.org and it says explainer what Christians should know about Kamala Harris, the biblical rec recorder website. And I'm going to scroll down. It says, is Kamala Harris now the presidential nominee for the Democratic Party? This was written. I oh, doesn't have a date on it just yet. Ah, July 25th, 2024. Uh, what role did Kamala Harris serve in before becoming vice president? Talking about stuff in California. In areas of importance to Southern Baptists, how has Kamala Harris governed or, governed or advocated for policy? It said life. Kamala Harris is the first vice president to ever make an official visit to a reproductive right clinic. In 2024, Harris toured a Planned Parenthood in Minnesota. Remember Planned Parenthood went to the Democratic National Convention. Remember had a bus sitting outside to talk to people. She praised the clinic's works, the clinic work workers for providing true leadership and helping people to have the health care they need. What's wrong with going to the free clinic? Do they not have free clinics in the hood no more? Are they all turned into parent Planned Parenthood clinics? That's a problem. And Margaret Sanger, eugenics movement, I'm going to need y'all to look that up. In 2020, Harris affirmed her opposition to the Hyde Amendment, this is 2020, which prevents the use of federal funds for reproductive right procedures. Flouting years of bipartisan consensus around the policy, she was also a co-sponsor of the Women's Health Protection Act, of 2019, which would have prevented all restrictions on reproductive right procedures. Additionally, in her, in her role as attorney general, she was a proud proponent of California's Reproductive Fact Act, which forced pro-life clinics to offer information to pregnant mothers about getting reproductive rights. Referring to herself as a co-sponsor of the legis legislation, she thanked then Governor Jerry Brown for his work in passing the law. Pro-life advocates challenged the law all the way to the Supreme Court, which ruled that it violated the free, the free speech free speech rights of the Resource Center in NIFLA versus Beck Becerra. They say marriage and sexuality. In 2010, Harris refused to defend a constitutional amendment passed by California voters, which restricted marriage to only those between a man and a woman. And you would be a pastor, and you're going to support this woman here make it make sense because she refused to defend it in her role as attorney general it was left to supporters to mount a legal defense so she changed her mind because she thought she's gonna lose the ballot so she just you no know, saying go with the win in february 2013 harris argued in an amicus brief opposing the bill that the legislation was unconstitutional and that its supporters should not be allowed to defend it in court the Supreme Court ruled in a 5-4 decision that the defendants of the bill did not have a legal standing to defend it in federal court. The bill was later overturned. Harris has also been a vocal supporter of the Extreme Equality Act, which would add sexual orientation and gender identity to the Civil Rights Act of 1964. You see, man, us freedmen, this is this is when this is how we always end up at the bottom, but everybody else gets some kind of policy and move to the top and has been viewed as the most serious threat to religious liberty ever to be considered in Congress. In 2019, then Senator Harris sponsored the Do Not Harm Act, which would have limited application of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. The introduced legislation would have prevented appeals to RFRA by religious individuals in instances such as appealing anti-discrimination legislation, which would include sexual orientation and gender identity laws. 
and the and and they and you also talk about a candidate who whose state made it like illegal for you to ask your child if well if you know say if they want to have a you know what identity they want to want to have or if your child tells your teacher or counselor that they're a boy and they want to be a girl or if they're a girl they want to be a boy that they don't have to tell a parent this is the state she comes from very liberal blue liberal blue california though the law was not passed but but you supposed to be again as a pastor you want to endorse this lady though the law was not passed it highlights just one of harris's attempts to curtail religious liberty protection let's say how should southern baptists respond to the news of biden's endorsement of harris and the baptists should pray for president biden and vice president harris scripture calls us to pray for leaders so that we might lead peaceable lives unfortunately the positions that Harris has a track record of support and advocating for would lead to a devaluing of marriage, the death of the preborn, and a restricting of religious religious liberty for people of faith. Southern Baptists should pray that Harris, should she secure the nomination, which she has, would have a miraculous change of heart and pursue policies and legislation that would have, that would advance the dignity of the preborn, strengthen the family, and protect religious liberty rights. Further, they should publicly called harris and the democratic party to add planks protecting these rights to the party's platform which the ethics and religious liberty commission has called for in the recent letter sent to the dnc oh they sent a letter to the dnc do i got time to read this i might read it's not that long download the record download the rnc letter oh so it's two letters amazing let's see i don't feel like Dang, do I want to read this? I'm just going to watch a dang on video. Mercy. See, dear Chairman Weltley, for me and Southern Baptist, one issue remains a central part of our nation's policy, the sanctity of preborn life. Oh, this is like a pro-life. Okay. Okay, interesting. I might read that some other time. Right now, we're going to get to this video. So again, this, and so all that is like a precursor to this video. Like I said, this is on October 17th. You see, a couple of days ago, she was at a rally. I want y'all to pay attention. Try to listen real closely to what's being yelled in the background and then what's her response. Because ours is a fight for the future. And Why does woman sound like she is inebriated all the time? Like, seriously. And it is a fight for freedom. For freedom. Like the fundamental freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. Now, it's funny she said it because Trump said that this reproductive rights issue should be handled in the states. That means that the people vote for what they want in those states. And not take it federal. See, the federal government don't doesn't want to deal with it, so they like don't even bother. Basically, what Trump is saying, look, don't don't even bother the federal federal government with this. Y'all vote for y'all if it's important to y'all. Y'all vote for it. You know, if you want it, fine. If you don't want it, whatever. If the state you in don't want it, do like some of them do and move. If the state does vote for it, do like some people who don't like it, move and move. It's as simple as that. But it's Trump's just like he understand <clears throat> some instances where it's like, you know, incest or, you know, or, 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 you know, violation of a woman's body. He can understand that, but just doing it all willing it as a form of contraception. Nah, that's, 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 that's not cool. Not cool at all. on this we remember donald trump hand selected three members of the united states supreme court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of roe v wade and they did as he intended oh you guys are at the wrong rally
No, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. I don't know if y'all heard what they said in the background, but hold on. I can help y'all. Let's go to the comments right quick. <sighs> the guy shouted, Jesus is Lord. And then she said these things. No wonder she couldn't show her face at the Catholic dinner. What a phony. Another person said her response to Jesus is Lord is all I need to know. No one says, woe to those who call good, evil, and evil good. Jesus is Lord at every rally, always. Now, I'm going to say, yeah, y'all know uh, I am a Hebrew Israelite by faith. Still read the scriptures, you know, pretty much. A I mean, there are differences in things like the name. You know, I, you know, I call him, you know, uh, Yahoshua or the Messiah. It's that the third because anyway. Anyway, same person. Not really, not really the same, but you, you know, you, you know what I get. You know what I'm getting at. But <clears throat> the man said, Jesus is Lord. And what she said was, you're at the wrong rally. You want to go to the one down the street. After, you no, know, after she said she won't be gaslight, glad, gas lit on these issues. I'm going to try to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she probably didn't really hear what they said. She's heard some people hollering in the background, trying to interrupt her. And she said, you know, you need to go down the street to the other rally because we don't do that around here. And then, But everybody started yelling, man, this is a evil, this is an evil, evil, evil country we live in, world we live in. It's going further and further away from scriptural, scriptural beliefs and it is scary, <clears throat> but I personally believe that this is an age of change. You know, they say every 2000 years, things evolve, things change. And I think right now that's where we are at. It is going to get worse before it gets better. But if she did hear what these people said, then there is no way in the world that you, anyone who claims to be a scriptural believer, whether you're Christian, Hebrew Israelites, Catholics, Jewish, whatever, could follow a woman who made that statement because I believe that statement came from the soul. It came from the heart and it's what she believed. She like, I don't want to hear all that, you know, this, all, all this God talk. <laughs> But she's supposed to be a Baptist, right? And I don't even think a Hindu would say something like that. Well, yeah, she's supposed to be a Baptist, and this is how she responds to Christian folk. But sometimes policy is not enough. Sometimes what someone believes spiritually, I believe really should be the end all to be all. And a person cannot hide their spirit. They cannot hide who they are forever. They can try to put a mask on, but they have, but sooner or later, they have to take that mask off in order for them to breathe because with that mask on, they can sweat, sweat a lot and it could be uncomfortable. So eventually they're going to have to take it off so they can, sh so they can show their true self. Nope. I don't believe in this woman. I will not be voting for this woman. Uh, Hey, I'm still doing research on candidates nationally, Senate wise and locally and state wise and locally, because like I said, I'm voting early on Monday because I'm sick of this stuff. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story. Leave your comments below, share it with the world. I want to thank y'all for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those four things cost you nothing, but maybe a couple of minutes after a day, but they mean the world to us. If you would like to support monetarily, you can always get a super thanks, super checks, or go to the description box below. There are links there you can click on. You can support that way. Don't forget to go to MarlonMorale.com. That's MarlonMorale.com where you can get 10% off your first purchase. Or you can go to the shop button below this video. 
and get your products there. Oh, also do not forget to go to my Patreon, um, uh, my Patreon channel. I'm kicking it back up. I'll start uploading all my videos to that Patreon channel just because on one of my recent videos, which is interesting, it was demonetized. I say it wasn't eligible, it was not eligible to be monetized because of copyright, you know, laws, but I, you know, you know, I, I shot back, tried to fight it, dispute it because, you know, the, the, under the, what is the Fairness Act of Fair Use Act of 1976 or 1979, whatever. And say, hey, I'm just doing commentary, giving, you know, education, entertainment, you know, for the people. Nothing malicious. This and the third. But they still demonetized it. And I had like one view. But then all of a sudden I put a post out saying that, hey, they, because they, they said you couldn't see it, really wasn't visible in pretty much any country. So I put a post out saying that, hey, my video, you might not be able to see it, it might be demonetized. I don't know but go to my Patreon channel and you can watch it uncensored. And then all of a sudden the views just jumped. You know what I'm saying? Not like these big channels, but you know, it jumped compared for, for my channel. It's all of a sudden I'm like, dang, isn't that interesting? But anyway, like I said, I'll be posting all my videos on Patreon. Also YouTube, just in case. And then some videos that I know that won't be able to be seen on YouTube. I'll put it on there too. You know, it's a, you can watch a lot of them for free. Uh, some videos got to have a little membership, but some are just a dollar a month. So it's not a whole lot. But anyway, I appreciate you watching regardless. And with that being said, I leave you in peace and I'll see you on the other side.